Good morning, Stefan. <laughs> Good morning, Jamie. Cheers to you. How are you this morning? Uh, I am very well. I am still shaking out the cobwebs, but yeah, uh, yeah. that uh, it'll take us a moment to get rolling. But it I think, does. Uh, I think we have lots of good content to, <laughs> for do. whatever for whatever reason. I, I uh, well, I know we have several reasons actually, but I think it's been a very <laughs> it's been an expansive week, and I could definitely feel. Um, I had a good load of joy on. I can I can say that. Oh, that's great. I feel similar. <laughs> and it has, I think a, a week of expanse is such a perfect word for, for my own experience as well. So I love that you chose that word. So unconstrained, here we are. <laughs> unconstrained, here we are, yes. Unconstrained. Yeah. A show where we talk about anything and everything big and anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny when we start this uh, when we start this conversation it seems like we are getting to know each other all over again it does in a lot of ways you know right? if we've it's... known each other for years yet here we are yeah each time we start a, this conversation it's like wow how have I changed? How have you changed? And who is that person now that I'm communicating to? Which is is awesome that it continues to unfold in such a way, you know. And well, well and what what I think I realize is that everyone is like that. Everyone uh, is changing at different rates. Obviously, some are molasses on cold <laughs> some are molasses on cold pavement yeah yeah it's true <laughs> right and some are oil on a hot skillet <laughs> <laughs> you know that's such a um so true so true and I don't know it, it's funny because I know last week it took us a little bit to kind of find the rhythm I, I loved hearing your stories, but I felt like uh, last week it took my own brain a little bit to just get ignited. And I, you know, I do have those, those times where I feel like I've felt like that a lot lately where I'm, I've been experiencing a lot of physical like headaches and stuff. So I, what? Yes. Wow. Really? <laughs> what? Sure, yeah. <laughs> a lot of what? headaches lately and and it's it hurts it sucks you wake up you're in pain gene so it's kind of like okay i mean even this morning right like it was very mindfully like okay this is what's going on but this is how i want to feel this is you know like this is how i don't want to feel and this is how i want to feel despite everything that's going on physically and the pain that i feel and what can i do to you know address it but move forward anyway <laughs> so that was kind wow. of this morning for me well, I'm curious about the headaches because I had what I can only describe as sinus it's like a low grade yes. sinus headache this whole and I, I don't even know if mine's low grade but like you know like yeah this whole like quadrant of my head feels mm -hmm. like my brain is trying to explode <laughs> out the side but yeah mm -hmm. sinus is here my eye yeah yeah so that that uh the the louise hay metaphor for those types of things are literal. like if it's a sinus headache or an allergy it's like literally being allergic to someone oh wow yeah right it's so the so the but the but i don't i have suspicions as you know, if, if I were to fully invest in that metaphor, I have some suspicions because there's still, I still have some loose ends to deal with, with yeah. someone in my life, Yeah. but they're minor loose ends. So maybe that's why it's kind of a minor sinus headache. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But on the other hand, it is, it's, uh, it triggered my own fear of like, oh, have I got covid again or have i right like yeah like i'm quadruple vaccinated i've had covid once right? I've, I've done everything i can to stay well yeah 
but here I am and I've got this headache. So I took COVID tests. Of course, it's not COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So not here beca- because I can still smell things. That's the other thing. My se- my se- the my sensitivity to smell and taste is still very high. Yeah. You know, but it's- we had COVID in January and I never lost my sense of smell or taste. Like it, we, we tested positive for it for 14 days we had, <laughs> but I never lost the taste or smell. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if I had just a special, special strain. Well, it's, di- well, that's the thing about COVID. It's different for everyone. It attacks you where your immune system weaknesses are or your system is weak. So the, it's hard to know. I mean, my, 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 one of my dear friends was paralyzed by COVID because it reactivated a paralysis that he had experienced when he was hit by lightning earlier in his life. So it reactivated the paralysis from the lightning. That is wild. And then he also, yeah. And he also lost his eyesight for a while and was, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Not, not COVID related as far as we know, but maybe, I mean, honestly, maybe, um, it happened in 2020 early. Yeah. On. yeah. Wow. Wild well, stuff. well, that's wild stuff, but in good news, <laughs> in good, well, in good news, <laughs> uh, we, we are experiencing, I mean, I am experiencing, uh, the ability, let's say the ability to generate a lot of positive energy, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, my uh, juice uh, yesterday, my one of my buddies um, gave me one of his employees to take out sailing in advance of this guy having to do a lot of work. And he says, I just want him to chill and be focused. And so we went out i took him out sailing on our little dinghy francis and the wind was perfect and we were just ripping up and down the lake and the boat was the boat was planing and it was there was no one out on the lake because it was a monday you know afternoon yeah and there's a million people in the city surrounding this lake and 30,000 of them are on the freeways and others are in offices or in markets. And here we are, maybe there were 10 people out on the lake. Maybe there were 20 people out on the lake at any given moment out of the, you know, out of the million that are live in this metropolitan area. I love it. I love it. So I felt very lucky and I felt like I was able to translate how special that moment is, how, how incredibly privileged we were to be out in the middle of this beautiful little lake in the middle of Seattle, in the middle, in the of, mid- the day. middle of Monday afternoon, <laughs> you know, yeah. Monday afternoon. I love that. <laughs> I do love that. And that's, uh, freeing in you know what a free spirit feeling that is yes and he shared and he shared was vulnerable and shared some things with me about his own travails and so all of it was and he is dealing the he is dealing with healing his own issues and um and doing better and better and better. So it was a it was a nice little celebration. Whether he recognized it or not, it it was a celebration uh, uh, of what he's accomplished so far. That's really beautiful. And he's a young dad. So it's- so it's a lot. It's a lot for him because he's not also not necessarily have regular access to his kid. Okay. So the yeah. So situation. all of that. Yeah. yeah. So um, I want to hear about uh, your colorful moments around the pool. Your the oh, the man. the feeling about meeting a bunch of people that n- normally might have given. Uh, <laughs> uh, any of us uh, social anxiety 
<laughs> yeah, a lot of very uh, extroverted women. Okay, so the setting. I was invited by my friend Joy, who is an entrepreneur. Um, she's she built something for ten years, and now you know moved on from that and is building something new. And anyway, she invited me to her birthday, which was it ended up being a very well curated group of like really smart women. And I just felt absolutely honored to be included in that list, especially after meeting everyone. I was just like, wow, this is, this is awesome. Um, but I was very nervous leading up to it. As I know, you know, um, I lean, I skew a little more on the introverted side of things, but um, decided to accept this invitation to feel uh to shift things, to shift what I identify as and, and what I am and, and just try to grow a little. So in that, in doing that, I, uh, I had a two and a half hour road trip out to, uh, we rented a house. It's like a $3.6 million house. <laughs> it's a gorgeous house. Um, it was like 7,000 square feet, very private. Um, a pool, a very private pool, but big and right in the middle of, of kind of like the outskirts of St. George, Utah, where there are mountains oh, and red rocks and gorgeous. And interestingly, the road this home was off of is the road where I ran my very first marathon. And, and I grew up about an hour away from where we were. So very, you know, I grew up in rural Nevada, but right on the Utah, Nevada state line, sort of. So very rural kind of pioneer area, but this, so it's, you know, it's an area I'm familiar with. These are all new houses that didn't exist when I grew up out there. And, um, just, um, yeah, I showed up, everybody was there already. I kind of went on my own time. A lot of them carpooled and stuff, but I, I arrived about an hour after everybody else and the car, the road trip out there. I love a road trip. So that was really nice. And it was space for me to kind of get in the head, the headspace, right? Of, okay, I'm going to be around um, basically eight women I don't know and one woman I do know. And and I'm going to just trust that this is going to work out. And if anything doesn't work out, I can leave. I can just get in my car and drive away if I need to. So, But the, the idea was to show up on Friday and leave on Sunday. And um, and I did that. And I, I got there and was very immediately comfortable. Um, everybody was welcoming and the conversations I mean I had I, I I got the opportunity to learn a lot about people I didn't know which I think was wonderful I met you know people doing amazing things both locally and just in the world um, and then I also had some of our kinds of conversations about um, energy and light and um, expanse and and possibility and you know just um the kind of conversation that i am very hungry for in general and and i think that that was just that was the flow and i'm a early to bed early to rise person and, and i think everybody else in the house is more of a late to bed late to rise person so i had you know it's like i went to bed and everybody stayed up and did movies and cake and stuff but i i was like okay <laughs> i have my little room my own room my own bathroom my own little porch out to look out the opposite side of the house. <laughs> it was very nice. And um, man, I feel like I'm a little, there's so much to share yet. Um, man, I don't want to drag on with every single detail, but it was, it was great. But yeah, like I woke up at four in the morning, put on a pot of coffee, went out and sat by the pool and the stars were still out and out there, you know, the stars compared to most cities, there's so many more stars, you know, it's just yeah. an abundance of stars and you feel, you feel like you're just this tiny little piece of everything, you know, and um, yet mm. you're, you're there and, and it was beautiful. And I watched the sun come up over the mountains and illuminate the red rocks behind me. And, you know, just kind of like looked around and, and around seven or eight um, other people started to come out and we sat in the pool and talked and yeah you were in the zone <laughs> it, was, it was 100 you were in the zone, zone. <laughs> and um <laughs> yeah i mean it was just beautiful and everybody kind of chipped in it was interesting to me too i i 
I hope, and it certainly felt like everybody felt this way, but like, you know, some of us would like cook or help cook and chop things. I'm no cook, I'm a terrible cook, but we all kind of just, there was an abundance of food that Joy's husband put together this whole bunch of food and, and stuff. So we had food and everything we could possibly want for, I don't know, for a couple of days there. And um, so we, we did like a nacho bar and we did, had a breakfast bar and we had, you know, we did a lot of mocktails because uh, I would say about half the group was non-drinking and half the group is drinking. So we did a lot of mocktails. I tried a bunch of mocktails and I did have a little tequila, but um, I mostly enjoyed not drinking. Um, and mm -hmm. it was pretty, uh, man, it was just really, really good. And I feel like I walked away with eight new friends that I didn't have before. And um, yeah. who I will keep in touch with, I believe, you know, in so yeah, really cool stuff. Yeah. Well, you were met. <laughs> it was... You were met at your you were met at your level. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. And and you know, that's one of those things that like had I stayed attached to my framework, I would have never experienced that. Um so the importance of letting go of your existing framework even if even if not constantly but like let go once in a while in order to let more in and um doing that feels so good even still you know it wasn't just like oh now i have to go back and go to my regular life it doesn't feel like that at all my regular life my regular life feels more open my regular life feels bigger because of that experience. Well, that was your regular life in that yes. moment. That was <laughs> your regular life. Yes, it and was. The, and the the framework again. The 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 well, one we have to acknowledge, or I will acknowledge the, that that was brave to do that, and two our frameworks are completely arbitrary. Exactly. The exactly. only reason they become a framework is because we believe in them <laughs> or by def uh, and we don't need to consciously believe in them. We reinforce them just through habit and we don't even need, we don't even need to know what that framework is to live within the framework. Right. Right. It's right? Be definitely it's predefined just, for us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It is, it is arbitrary and, and many times completely obscured. And then even when we recognize it, it's still arbitrary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was, um, oh man, it was such a beautifully curated group. And I have to really uh, hand it to Joy for that. Like what a, I mean, I, I've always, I, I, so joy was turning 36 it was her 36th birthday so i have wow. you know like i sometimes i'm like wow am i gonna fit here you know i think the age span was i don't know 30 to 55 of, of the 10 of us mm -hmm. that were there and what a beautiful mix of people that all like age really didn't even come up you know i mean like i'm thinking about it now but we all just blended beautifully and um Met yeah, on I'm such beautiful levels. I'm thinking, what was I doing at 36? At 36, I had a 36, I had a six-year-old and I was I was cleaning windows. I think I was, those were my Zappos days at 36. So right uh, around there was uh either I was leaving Zappos. It would have been around the time I met you, I think, mm. 36 for me. I think, yeah, that sounds about right. Wild. <laughs> leaving <Yeah>. Zappos and <laughs> doing other things. Yeah, wild, wild stuff. But, you know, and then I have, I have another trip coming up um, September 13 through 17 with just the girls. I rented a house in Hawaii. And it's all to ourselves also, but it'll just be me and Soph and Z and um, me and my daughters. <laughs> so it'll just yeah. be the three of us and we have the house to ourselves. Um, 
Yeah, there's a volcano national park across the island. We're staying in Kona. Mm -hmm. um, but the house looks beautiful and quiet. And I just, I'm really looking forward to, yeah, another experience of, of sort of expanse. Um, it's interesting because I keep thinking of, like, in a lot of ways, I imagine I'm going inward, but it's also, it's just expanse seems to be the word of the day. <laughs> Well, the, this is the thing, like you said earlier, you are uh, a little part of this universe. You were sitting, <clears throat> pardon me, you were sitting out under the stars. You were a tiny bit of the entire universe. We are a bit of the universe and we have access energetically to everything that's available in the universe and our limit is our perception of what our limit is yeah. <laughs> right again it's arbit it's arbitrary right yeah. some some people are setting land speed records some people <laughs> are climbing mountains some people and they're the same they have the same relatively they are humans they are flesh and bone they have yeah. brains they right? some are inventing things and it it all just has to do with the circumstance surrounding them and what they believe about the circumstance surrounding them. And arguably some circumstances are very tough and very challenging, but there are innumerable humans who are breaking arbitrary boundaries all the time. Yeah. And the, the going inward is going to that place of knowing where things aren't, there aren't frameworks anymore, right? That connected place sitting out under the stars or maybe for me out on the lake where once again, we're back to that place where temporal and material concerns disappear. Right. Yes. That going when we go inward or when either way, we could call it going inward or we call it we could call it expanding. There is an infinite amount to discover going inward. There is an infinite amount to discover going outward. Essentially, they are the same. The 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 it's just how we label them. Right. We have to label them as a dichotomy. But right. in the end you're going, if you're going inward, eventually you're going to end up at nuclear particles and the space between nuclear particles. And if you're going outward, you're eventually going to end up at planets and galaxies in the empty space between planets and galaxies. Yeah. What's the, what's the difference somewhere in there is in this is some kind of as we we've talked about so often some kind of organizing principle right right, right? that creates the two-headed the two-headed flatworm and right. is can constantly regenerating every single part of us and it's not like like we scrape ourselves and it heals yeah our fingernails are growing. Our teeth are regenerating calcium all the time because we're eating food and grinding them down. All of this is being organized somehow. And it's not genetics. Right. Which is, <laughs> I've thought about that many times. I brought up the flatworm conversation um, with one of the women there because we were talking about, yeah, yeah this we were talking about this and uh it was pretty wild and pretty uh, i don't know it was really nice to connect with someone in that way too in addition to you and you know it, it was it's nice she called yes me, what did she say she said because i was talking about you i said stefan and i do this this these conversations every week and she goes he's another pilgrim and he it's always good to find other pilgrims that you can nod to along the way. <laughs> and I love that, um, that yeah. term. That was really great. 
Yeah. And, you know, in India, you would be called a sannyasin or a devotee of some guru or some way of <laughs> thinking or, if you, you know, like yoga, mm -hmm. some practice. But yeah, I mean, that we, I guess I am a pilgrim. I am looking for the more, the greater part of the universe that's available to me. And I am interested in knowing I'm not interested in judging or trying to figure out. I am interested yeah. in direct knowing. Knowing and and in that in that is also experiencing and and feeling. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then the this is I can't remember were we talking about this the you know, we have these amazing experiences. Everyone has access to amazing non-ordinary experiences and the what happens in society is we try to fit all of those into a framework right that's yeah how and so then we limit our understanding of what's actually there what we are experiencing, especially if it is what we could call non-ordinary, whether you're seeing a ghost or talking to an entity from another planet or, or experiencing uh, channeling information from somewhere or any number of things that we would call supernatural, non-ordinary you know, or even just the miracle of bumping into somebody who you might not have seen in 10 years and you happen to be on a plane in New Jersey, you know, you're landing in <laughs> New Jersey and all of a sudden you bump into somebody that you know from Canada. Yeah, that's what right? happens all the time, I feel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But the, the, the limiting thing to do is decide what it means. The expansive thing to do is to decide that that's information. It's just information, right? It's yeah. just information. And then to see what this information brings in terms of feeling and deep understanding, instead of trying to put it in a bucket somewhere. I'll give an example from my own life I've had experiences that you could call past life experiences now if I call that a past life experience that makes everything that we experience linear sure. and limiting but is this a future life experience is it a past life experience or is it nothing it does everything all of this information exists here all at once, right? Yeah, that's fascinating, and, yeah. And our, our perception of time is just another framework, yes, right? That we impose definitely. on, that, right? That we impose on stuff. So, so one of the, and I can't remember the conversation or who I was having this with, but ultimately what I learned is to take all of this that I'm experiencing, just take it in as information because the, the, the danger or the limiting part of it is to take it in and have an emotional response. Like, oh, that's weird. Oh, or, sure. oh, that's strange. Or that's, <laughs> that's crazy, right? Yeah, right? I don't, I don't use that word anymore. I've really to, been working on that one since our last conversation. Cause I, I, uh, and so wild has been my replacement word, <laughs> but even, you know, even that, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it's good to have an expression, right? A, a way to emote yes. a response that people can understand. But at the same time, I, I've been trying to be more thoughtful about which word I choose and which word I put back out there. <laughs> Yes. Well, wild is fun because it's more expansive. Yeah, I, I like it for now until I find something else or something better, or if there's just something more appropriate for the time. 
<laughs> and the situation. Well, and there may be a point where there is no need to try even say anything about what we're experiencing. I, I think the thing, right, what the benefit of what we're doing is it's reinforcing our willingness to be open which I, I mean, love. one of the things <laughs> that's right? everything right now and, and uh, it is an acknowledgement that yes um yes we are not i will use this word we are not crazy right we are not the we are not alone at the point that what's really nice about somebody saying oh you're a pilgrim is that uh there's support mm -hmm. for what we do yeah psych psychically people Absolutely. are out there uh experiencing these types of expansive thoughts and uh having these types of experiences with people who are dear to them and people they don't even know yeah i love um kind of going back to my whole experience this weekend and how it, it kind of relates to that but I had um you know we talked about it kind of leading up to this experience I had some I was like oh everybody was on a little group chat and I started to get overwhelmed thinking like I don't belong here I don't belong with these people like I'm not like this and these aren't things that get me excited and oh crap what have I gotten myself into <laughs> but deciding like it's okay just let go of that keep going stick to the path for now and see what happens and if it if you get there and it feels wrong if it doesn't feel like something you can experience fully leave go back yeah home. you know you, well, you have what, control what, over that yeah what would you rather be doing yeah and and that's that's something you know it, it was really ken was like you control the situation like you know you control the situation that you put yourself in and you can walk away you can experience it you can you know you decide and and it was a such a great reminder that yeah like and just like that just like this just like you know these conversations that we have we we walk into them openly and we see what happens and and we take from these conversations fuel i feel that that you know i don't know like that provides a whole nother week of adventure and experience and open-mindedness <laughs> and and maybe headaches <laughs> from, from learning More. and from i don't know maybe it's like a, it, that's all information that's coming in it's like oh it's, it's got to make space or something in there i don't know what it is well it's you know that it's vibrating <laughs> and so there may be something there that was stuck a long time ago that now is vibrating and wanting to come out or I think the well the there's a difference between giving yourself right the 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 I think the first step is giving yourself license to do whatever you want for whatever reason yeah right so if you need to leave you need to leave yeah if it doesn't feel good I think that the challenge is in that moment of knowing that something doesn't feel good. It's like just choosing something better. So it's, it's not the difference. It's the difference between pushing something away and just walking towards something that we want more of. Yeah. Right. To acknowledge that it's like moving, like what would be better than this yeah what would i prefer what would i rather be doing who would i rather be working with yeah or what would i rather be experiencing right now it might be a nap yeah <laughs> right? it might and be as simple as that that you know even in in the in that party of of amazing people every once in a while you know like one of us would disappear and go in our own space and and like you know i went i went to my room and closed the door and i just hung out with myself for a couple of hours and you know <laughs> just, and then i was like okay i can go out again and and nobody was like is everything okay you know like they knew i was fine just doing my own thing and um and we all did that you know everybody had their own rhythm well that 
Yeah, and that's because people were comfortable with themselves. Yeah, very much right. so. Very much so. And it was so nice. <laughs> it was so nice. Yeah. Yeah, because they are not needing to go outside of themselves for affirmation, right? Exactly. So a lot of times it's like, oh, is this person okay? It's it's a need, it's a need to affirm their own care ability to care or but ultimately if we are we can use the word self-actualized i guess yeah but it's it kind of a it's kind of lame in a way self-actualized is kind of lame i don't know the i don't know if i have a better word at the moment one might come up but if we are let's say fulfilled and okay and being fully in our being yeah. There is no need to go out and create drama or false currency as a yes. means to connect with someone. That's, um, I think, one of the most awesome parts of the, the group that I was very honored to be a part of over the weekend was that yeah, there was none of that. There was no concern or explanations or, you know, it was just, there was just, everybody was present and feeling and open and um, contributing in their own way. I, I want to say to like, to, to the overall energy of the, of the group, like it, it just, yeah, it didn't feel like trying. It didn't feel like we were trying to do anything everything just happened and unfolded as it as it may <laughs> mm -hmm. it just felt awesome and like sunday um they got a like a late checkout from the the rental house so they were gonna leave at like four or whatever but i was ready to go at around noon and i i headed out i said you know thank you and and goodbye and i got in my car and drove free-spiritedly <laughs> to, <laughs> to my home but and felt very um at peace, I guess is, is, but that, that's it. It's like there, I, uh, I have been around folks who, you know, they, they express frustration for like, oh, I must've, um, they must not like me or they must not, you know, and it's just like, there was none of that at this, yeah this, none of that. Well, and I certainly didn't want to bring it, even though I am often one that feels like I don't belong here, you know, like I bring that sometimes, but I want, I was, very mindful like when I walked in the door and you know there were folks carrying stuff in from vehicles still and I just grabbed some stuff and brought it in and just immediately it was it was welcoming and there was no judgment I, at least I didn't feel any and I did I, I was very mindful in the beginning to to leave mine at the door you know don't bring mm -hmm. that in here even if you feel it like just leave it and be open to the experience and and it really um it didn't even take that much mindfulness right like once i i would like made that decision it's like okay you're leaving that thought of i don't belong here it stays it stays somewhere else like it's not coming with you and and it didn't and it wasn't a challenge i didn't have to keep reminding myself nothing like that it was like once i decided it was just not there anymore and i didn't have to negotiate with it anymore yeah um, that's great work yeah you know and it, it's, you gave you gave yourself a gift there <laughs> thank you for that yeah. and writing about it is you know that's a another with my little doodles or whatever I just kind of I was like well I'm gonna start sharing a little bit more of that because often my often my stuff is like I don't I share just enough but I keep a lot contained um as mm -hmm. well and with this experience, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna put it out there and you know, like maybe it's too much for people or maybe it's not, but they can choose not to read it, right? Like if, if it's too much for people, like don't have to read it. They can just look at the doodle and move on. <laughs> yes. I remember years ago, early in the, uh, early in the days of social media where uh, we would, we would post beautiful meals that we were eating oh, yeah. or, I remember or, or cooking. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people still do that. Yeah. 
probably more boomers and generation Xers than the younger pe- folks. <laughs> Your beautiful plate of food. Yeah, food was. But I would, one. you know, I'd like barbecue some beautiful mackerel or something or take it. And, and I had a friend who got really upset about your food posts food posts and i was like i was like george <laughs> you don't have to follow me yeah exactly <laughs> right like turn me just turn me off yeah exactly <laughs> what's, your, Keep what's your what's your because other people like these things right we yeah. we're just entered we're just entertaining each other that's and so you funny. can turn my channel off. You exactly. can turn me off. I had to tell him. And he is, he is a, he is a, maybe he's 10 years older than me. So he's a, you know, he's a full on, full on boomer. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, on the cusp. I'm a <laughs> mostly, mostly boomer, maybe generation Xer. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it, it was funny because he was seemingly that's the feeling is is when someone is in that place they are stuck in a world that they don't want right they're pushing against things instead of conjuring up something they do want because why like one if you see a if you see something you don't like why do you have to tell everyone that you don't like it? Because yeah. you could be you could be spending creative energy on creating something you do like. Exactly. Like, like go go get a go get a donut. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's you know what that that exact thing is. Um, I mean, that's that's everything. Like to me, especially lately, right? It's it's. I don't really enjoy being around folks who can only complain about things like, like, yeah, there's, there's bad stuff happens. Yes. But we don't have to focus on it and not focusing, not focusing on it is not ignoring it. It's not, it's just choosing to try to attract more positive stuff. And well, yes, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think that we're ignoring all the the bad stuff in the world. I think it's just a matter of like, yes, that goes, I can acknowledge it, but I don't have to exist in it. Um, at least right now. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know it's- well, no, it's creative energy that's put to waste. I think of, I think of, um, well, maybe we already talked about it, but uh, when we, when I was up in Lake Wenatchee, up in the mountains uh, in July, there was a house in this neighborhood, in a, 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 a rural mountain neighborhood, a few blocks from Lake Wenatchee. And there's only really just a couple little intersections before you get to the main road. And there was a house and it was emblazoned with a, let's say five by eight foot banner hanging on the house that said, fuck Biden. Wow. (laughs) That's a lot of energy, right? That's a lot of energy. And that person had to go to some, first of all, Trump made a lot of money on that, right? Yeah. First of all, you're you're giving money. That, actually, I don't even want to make this about Trump. I just want right. to make this about energy. It was like that much energy towards someone you don't know yeah. who has very little influence on the quality of your life. And come on, dude, you're living in the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> Two blocks from Lake Wenatchee in the in the soaring pine forest yeah. with clean air. And it I mean, and this is where you choose to spend your energy, your creative energy. You worked, you worked for that money. Yeah. You worked for that money to have somebody somewhere in a flag or banner factory. Well, obviously. 
this is a giant sublimation printed banner. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I, I know right? what you're talking right? about. Yeah. A very, <laughs> very, and this is where someone spends their energy. And we can either spend all our energy pushing against all the things that we don't like, which won't get us anywhere. It just gets us more of what we don't like. Exactly. Or we can, you know, just imagine if he had spent that money on a banner for one of his kids or her, you know, I, I won't, I hurt his or her or a family member. Yeah. Or took that money and donated to some agency, yep. wounded warrior project, anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, anything. I feel like that's um, interestingly that those these are conversations I have with my kids too, right? Like it's. Mm -hmm. I feel like with my my older daughter, she is very good about curating the people in her life. Um, I feel it, it, with low drama usually you know i mean they're kids things happen everybody has little things happen but like but i feel like she's really surrounded herself with um really good influences and people who are trying to better their lives i mean at their age they're you know 17 and um she's done a really good job of that and and then my younger one i i feel like she's starting to find the awareness that you can shut the drama out. You don't have to participate in junior high drama. You can just leave it over there and, you know, attract things that are better. So the, those are conversations that I have with them a lot. It's like, you don't have to, you know, definitely don't participate in the drama. Don't be a generator of drama. Um, but, you know, when drama is around you, which it will be in junior high for sure. Um, you don't have to partake in the exchange. I mean, yeah. I, don't know, I feel like social media is very much that way too. If you feed it, it will grow. <laughs> you know? Well, social media is, I, you know, could be the, you know, it could be the great medicine or it could be the great poison. Yeah, exactly. It has all that potential and it is an, it gives incredible leverage well, to that's... certain ideas and yes. thoughts and patterns and that that uh and again it could be a medicine or a poison and social media is just like the universe it is it is the matrix it is a connected i mean if we think of tiktok and the scale for those people who don't know tiktok is the largest digital property in the history of digital stuff it's bigger than google more people spend time on tiktok than they do saying searching google that's wild i actually didn't even know that yeah tiktok is bigger tiktok is bigger than Facebook and Instagram combined. It is that there is no digital property. The average session on TikTok is maybe the last that was uh, like 10 to 13 minutes. And just think about how many 20 or 30 second videos you can watch in 10 to 13 minutes. So the amount of data and the amount of energy and the amount of ideas yeah. that are being exchanged or reinforced and TikTok is incredible. Yeah. So when a meme hits, kids believe it's important. And mm -hmm. because the moral system of children is, it's not our moral system, the moral system of teenagers, young, young teens has nothing to do with what's good for the world. It certainly evolved beyond what's good for just me, but the moral system of teenagers just has to do with the peer group. Yeah. And what is important to my peer group? Because they're the ones who are most like me because, because teenagers don't see themselves as adults. They don't see themselves necessarily connected to society. 
So their moral system only extends to their peer group because that's who they spend time with. That's where they get their entertainment. And those are the people who give them the most acknowledgement for the, for the most part, even though some of it could be very toxic and, and um, illegitimate types of acknowledgement, right? False currency. Yeah, yeah. And so, so when now that we, we have this incredible, and it's not, it is not social media anymore. That's the other thing that we're very clear of in our agency as we, we deal with our clients is this is entertainment. It's not social media. People are not exchanging. Very little exchange is happening. It's mostly taking in entertainment. So there is a, there is a passive exchange happening. But on TikTok, people aren't going, oh, hey, that's really cool. I like your trip here. And I want to cook that stuff that you just cooked. And there's very little of that happening. It's just scrolling. It's just where's that next piece of entertainment. Yeah. And so we're taking in things very passively. And for kids, if a certain meme hits, that can be very catalyzing or very destructive yeah yeah right very, i mean very. it could be a fitness it could be a fitness video or it could be some kid talking about their suicide or it could be right there's all yeah. kinds of and when those things hit it goes in because when you're seeking entertainment you're open and when you're scrolling uh, especially on things like TikTok, <laughs> temporal and material. This is the this is where, again, this is where TikTok is akin to a meditative space. Except the trouble with TikTok is you're passively taking things in yeah. into the this meditative space that can deeply affect you because you're wide open. Yeah. Well, and the curation. You know, I mean, I don't I don't use TikTok. I have one account that I followed on TikTok, and that's Sam Barsky. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's the most delightful thing on the internet as far as I'm concerned, but, yeah. um, you know, the most honest and, and genuine thing. And, um, but yeah, the curation, it's interesting because I experimented with the curation of some stuff. Like I, I have an Instagram account and then I started another one for coffee with Jamie and with that account i i was like i'm only gonna follow like creative people like i that's that's it in in the community that has kind of formed around that has been nothing but amazing and yes. encouraging and delightful to engage with and to interact with and the stuff that i see come across through that one channel um that i've mindfully curated is just it's creative and it's it's spirited and bright and like that as opposed to my personal account which i i you know it just kind of grew on its own and it, it it's its own thing um yes. but less mindfully curated it just kind of like okay you know whatever it, it it's such a different vibe um i don't know it, it's such a fascinating thing but your ability to curate it is always there. And that kind of goes back to like the guy with the house and the banner, right? It's like, he chose to put his energy into that and to broadcast that. And that's the energy he's putting out into the world, right? And and probably attracting back. He's like, yeah, people who agree or oh, the people who don't agree. And yeah, and that's the, that's the focus of that energy. And man, I mean, picture this clothing that little account as well has attracted you know we try to put what i believe is only good stuff out there but i i just completely stopped posting on it like this year i just 
I, I don't engage anymore. I, you get so many, you know, you get wonderful people. You're posting happy kids that have created their own clothing and often with their happy parents that are like, look at how happy my amazing kid is. And you'll still get people who have to tear it down. And I, I've never understood that. I've never understood the people who, who feel like they have to, oh, this is ugly. That's stupid. That's garbage or whatever. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I've never really understood it, but it's it's exhausting. And and I don't engage with it. I simply hit the hide button, which is one of the most fantastic features Facebook ever included. It's different than delete. Because if you delete it, you're like you're it censoring. Sets the tri- yeah, it triggers right? off. Yeah. It triggers and then you just get more. And so they created a button that says hide. And what it allows you to do is you just hit hide. It, it is not visible to anyone in the timeline except the person that wrote it. And they get <laughs> zero validation on it. Nobody comments yeah. on it. Nobody likes it because nobody can see it um, yeah. except me. Like I got to see it. I got to push the hide button. And then it just goes, it goes gray basically. And, yeah. um, but I love that because it's the validation that people are seeking. They want people to rally behind their opinion and go, yeah. And you know, me too, or whatever, well, but taking that away from people, it disarms it. Yeah. Well, we all want, yeah. And me too, <laughs> right. but I would like it for more positive things on me the planet. Too. Yeah. And ultimately if everyone could let go of even needing, yeah, me too, and be self-motivated. <laughs> yes. Which goes right. back to the house that I existed in this weekend. Right. Yes. It's like, nobody needed anybody else's validation we were yes. there we're on the same plane i think or maybe we weren't but like it felt it didn't matter it didn't matter if we were or we weren't it, what mattered was we all we all existed in this amazing space we experienced each other's the everything positive that we could bring and and there it was and that was great and then we went our separate ways there was no <laughs> there was no need for validation or me too or yeah it was just we're here to relax and we're here to feel and we're here to be open and yes and that's the ultimate self-directed life right? where we that. we are self we are self we are enough we are enough yeah unto ourselves we are self fulfilling we are self directed and we have direct knowledge about who we are and our own wholeness and our own understanding of what we want and and that that to me yeah that's what i want more of right there yeah and i want more of that yes yes and I, I want to be, I want, I want, I, I mean, that's, again, that's the point of why we're doing this yeah, is, exactly. to, is to reinforce those things as goals in our lives. And I want that in every, I want that in my work. I want that in my recreation. I want yes. that in my family and home life. And I, well, I just thought, why not believe that I have it? Exactly. <laughs> it, it, because you do. <laughs> right. Open it is it access. It is accessible. It is yeah. available. It's right here. And that that's the practice I feel of what we're doing though it, you know it, it's very much one of the things I love about this like a weekly check-in with you is that it's it's a reminder it's kind of like okay here's what happened here's where we're at and here's what's next we don't know what's next but here here's what happened since our last conversation and don't forget to be open for what's going to happen next right like I don't even know if that's the right parameter, but like, I, I like the reminder. I like the reminder of this dialogue that it's like, 
this is what you want in life, but maybe this is what you have already. This is what you have. And, and to remove the framework, let go of well, the framework, take it down. Yeah. And by changing focus, right? yep. I can, I can focus on my problems, but I can also focus on all the things that are around me that I can be grateful for. Yeah. yeah. So, and the, and did we talk about, I just keep, uh, I wanted to, there's two things, two little things I want. One, I didn't realize, um, let's see, uh, um, last week, <laughs> well, let's see if I can do this right there. But is that a scarab? It is a scarab. Yeah. And let's see, right uh, there. <laughs> um, that scarab is by my pal Gordini, who we talked about oh, last week. That's amazing. That's that awesome. is one of his pieces of tribal art. I love that. That's very and cool. It, it is made from wood scraps and rusty metal. Like the uh, scales on the scarab are rusty bits of metal that are nailed into. And it is that scarab has actually survived an earthquake when I lived in an old 1920s building called the Marlboro House and that shook things off the walls and that fell to the ground and broke the broke tip of the the scarab off but it's um it's holding together ah oh, that's very cool very cool i yeah, look at that every time we have our conversation and i'm like oh. i didn't yeah i didn't i didn't think of it at all we spent that whole conversation talking about my uh my friend gordini and i didn't realize that his scarab is behind me the whole time a little that. icon that's awesome. and that's the only i have i had his biography but i loaned it to a friend of mine which you never do with books that you really care about right right yep you buy a <laughs> copy <laughs> and, and now i don't know where it is but i do uh, have that i do have that scarab back there the other thing was i was talking with some of my, one of my uh, older Eeyore friends who is <laughs> spent, has spent a long time working on his divorce. And he said many challenging things happen. And he's a very competitive person. Yeah. As am I, I can go there. And we were talking about all kinds of things. And then he was talking, we're talking about getting old. And then I said, hey, we came up with a concept when we were when my friend I was with my friends Terry and Christy in the islands and maybe we mentioned it last week but the saying was hey he's like how can you not how can you not um, think about these things you know in the past or in the future and I said hey I'm just I'm just cheating death 10 minutes at a time <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> it's like, I haven't got time to keep looking back at all this stuff yeah. and trying to rehash it. And I haven't got time to try to mold these things way off. I'm just cheating death. I am just trying to be here right now, enjoying this moment because I am cheating death. It's a goofy way to say it, but people get the joke. Sure. But it is 10 minutes at a time. It could be a minute at a time, but 10 minutes is something people like I can just get through these next 10 minutes. People yeah. can people can understand that. Like in 10 minutes, I can maybe have a different, you know, we we've talked about 17 seconds as a, a window in which to change a a non-beneficial thought. Right. But almost any of us can get through something in 10 minutes. Absolutely. And if you <laughs> Keep in mind that no matter the situation, like right now, things change. Nature is a, such a great example of that. You know, nature is ever changing, ever, ever shifting. And, and we're just a piece of that. And I don't know, no matter how bad things feel, things shift eventually. Yes. Well, we are very lucky because we're in a flow of 
let's say, positive circumstances in our lives and that we've worked hard to get here and the tragedies that have come along the way, we have dealt with them. And I know that people who have been in tragic circumstances for me to come into that circumstance with them sometimes isn't welcome or believable yeah. when you're, when you're in a traumatic circumstance. Yeah. Right. Very- and so the, so I, I want to acknowledge that it's not all daisies and sunshine yeah. and uh, 10 minutes may not be enough to get through a particular circumstance or, uh, but, in general, we are resilient and we have the power to move through these moments in our lives. And it may not be 10 minutes, it may be two days, or it may be six months in the case of losing lo- loved ones, yeah. right? Or, or years even, but the, the key is always to keep focusing on what we want in the face of knowing exactly what we don't want and then letting go of the things that we can't affect or change, letting go of the fantasy of the past that we have lost. Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge one. That's really huge. Because I had, I had uh, a reunion with my favorite cousin. Uh, My mom, my mom has a regular call with her twin sister in Germany every week. It's regular. It's like clockwork. And my mom didn't get a call from her sister on Sunday. So there was a, well, see, right. See that, Uh, see that, right. I tell you that. And then you see, you see what it elicits immediate elicits drama. Yeah. But or concern. Yeah. Right. But again, if it's just information, when I I called my I got a hold of my cousin, my mom's twin sister's daughter, and she's just like, oh yeah, she tried to call, but there's something wrong with the phone, right? Yeah. There's long distance, and this is, you know, this is these are these are cute old German ladies who yeah. right lived through World War II, who are have a very specific phone system that works for them like a you know and so anything outside of that framework of the way the call works is a drama yeah (laughs) right it's not just like oh i'll just send a text there's no text messages here or or i'll just oh i can't get through on the landline i'll just whatsapp her or or facetime there isn't any of that for for at least for my mom for the, yeah, and that's right. understandable. But yeah, right. it's like and so it's, it is one of those things. It's like, <laughs> so so it's a drama, but the joy of that drama is I, I, just sent my cousin a WhatsApp. Yep, and and she responded, and then resolved, and then we spoke <laughs> on the phone for several hours because she grew up in a parallel world because our moms are twins yeah their frameworks are very alike yeah so the yeah. relationships they chose in their lives and the drama that's in their lives is very alike and my mom had two children her sister had two children my mom married somebody who was abusive um and dysfunctional and her twin sister married someone who was abusive and dysfunctional. And so as the eldest children in those families and my cousin, she had the additional challenge that she was the only girl in a sea of one, two, three, four, five, six, six cousins in, uh, in the my mom's side of the family and she was the only girl and that was tough because she was also the eldest and there was you know well the eldest not the not the complete eldest but in her in her family her, her brother is younger and we spent a an hour and a half 
talking about our healing journey and connecting and um, acknowledging the parallels in our lives and how much joy we had being around each other because there was this recognition, not necessarily conscious, certainly when we were younger, yeah. but that there was a great deal of joy in knowing that we were family members and that there was this path that we had been on together and that there was still plenty of healing to be done but what I noticed is that she still has anger about the past on things that she missed out on because of the trauma that was in our families. Interesting. Right. That yeah. because she, none of, no one ever taught us how to forgive. That wasn't part of the, there wasn't a lesson on forgiveness in my family. You are either in or you are out. Oh, wow. That is interesting. Right. I feel right. like that's something I was given by my parents very early on with the loss of my brother and how my parents handled that situation with, you know, they, there was a 16 year old kid who was driving the car when my brother was killed in this accident and they uh, chose not to press charges and to, you know, he had they they were very empathetic and yeah. that experience taught me a great deal about forgiveness and moving forward i don't know or forward. what an what an incredible gift what an incredible freedom the way i dealt with it was that i just kept focusing on things i wanted i didn't know i didn't know and there was a period where i had a mantra that was, I forgive myself. I forgive all others. I am forgiven. It was, a, and I would just ride around on my bicycle and I would repeat that to myself over and over, even though I didn't know what it felt like. I wanted to know what it felt like. So I would repeat the mantra so that when there was an opportunity, maybe to feel it or understand it, that I would be ready for it. And that was during a period where I had three friends die within, this was in my thirties where I had three friends die within a year and of all different ages. One was in his early twenties, one was 40 and another was in his early fifties. And so it was, uh, um, a period of great shock. But this, this is to the point, I'm, I want to go back actually to my cousin and having this connection yeah. with my cousin and seeing how she, it's important for her, like she's trying to recover memories because that's the other thing too. When, when we have these traumas is that we block things out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? I feel they like just I'm disappear. Really good at that. <laughs> But well, it's, it's a, true. Yeah. It's a protection it's a protection mechanism. What what the, what I wish for her or and everyone is that it without needing to know what those things are that we can let them go and forgive them that we don't need to know what they are because that's just energy in the past. And people think that they need to know that there's some kind of fix in needing to know it. Yeah. And uh, I've done primal therapy. I've right. I've gone back and I've rehashed these things. And in a lot of cases, it just reactivates the trauma. It just reinforces the pattern. And so it, it, for some, and for some people, it is a means of controlling the past or trying to understand the past, but we don't need to understand it. All we need to understand is who we are right now. And people think that the past has to do with who we are right now, but the past just got us here and we were already who we are, who we are throughout all of history. 
we were already that person. We were just masked. Who we were is was just masked by trauma and masked by the frameworks and the understanding in air quotes mm -hmm. <clears throat> that we think we put on that trauma, right? And so then there's excuses we make for the people who created trauma in our lives, or you could, you know, like I could say it was my, um, you know, my dad suffered PTSD in Korea and my mom suffered PTSD in, in World War II. And that would be an explanation. You could call it an explanation. You could call it an excuse, but I don't care anymore. Yeah. There doesn't need to be an explanation or an excuse. What does that do to that, move you forward? Because I'm doing... here. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm here talking with Jamie and none of that stuff matters because what matters is that I am free right now to be myself with you unconstrained unless I decide that I am constrained and that I have to fix this shit in the past or I have to understand this shit in the past or I have to move, or even that I have to move beyond it. I have moved beyond it. I am here with you, <laughs> right? It has gotten me, all of that stuff got me here to this moment. And so I wish that freedom for my cousin. I can see that she is being super, super brave in dealing with it because in Germany, especially there's not, as much room to be an individual there is not right she was the black sheep of the family she was the creative person my cousin reminds me of zia mm -hmm. like 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 if my cousin met your daughter <laughs> they would instantly recognize each other that's really cool yeah because they they when my, my cousin was the most like uh there was a period where she was here in the late 80s early 90s i uh i would say late 80s <clears throat> i i said you know just come i had her come visit and so i was in my late 20s she was more in her mid early 20s and she was so creative, her hair, her dress, her everything, makeup, everything. And she was making earrings from little painted, she would put shiny nail lacquer on little fish cat treats and turn them into petrified earrings and stuff. And everything was just awesome. And she took her before... Or before people did this, she took her Doc Martin boots and she carved off the leather so you could see the steel toe. Nice. <laughs> right. And, and um, it was the grunge era here. So she was going to grunge shows and record release parties that people would kill for to go to. And so this is a long setup for a moment where she was in a donut shop in Ballard and Ballard is the old Scandinavian part of Seattle. And in the eighties and nineties, there were still a lot of world war two era, little old Scandinavian ladies running around and she's in the coffee shop eating a donut with some coffee and it's fall, maybe it's September. And the woman looks at her completely earnest. She goes, oh, honey, I just love your Halloween outfit. And my cousin turns to her and she goes, yeah, thank you. For me, it's Halloween all year long. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Uh, my sister and I used to get a fair amount of that. Um, what is it? Halloween? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> back yeah. in the days of like yeah we i mean 
yeah, we were maybe progressive for where we well, grew up. And well, yeah. well, for for my cousin, it was just a means of seeking identity. Mm-hmm. Who am I? Who yeah. do I have to be? Because society and our family certainly were not up to somebody who was that creative and that uh, precocious. Yeah. Uh, it was too much. Or there wasn't room for it. Not in Germany, or let's say not in the community in Germany, right? Our family, they're a merchant family. They're hardworking. They're, they have businesses and then you go into the family business and there's there's not a lot of room so here she is now in her 50s and she's creating room for herself and she's gone through a great deal of challenge and she's raised a kid and she's had relationships and and now it's now it's for her she's being her own best friend yeah. And so, so I hope that we, so my hope is that her and I get to also do this, what you and I are doing. Yeah. Where we, where we spend more time with each other because she is very dear to me because she is, I recognize even when I was young, what a special human she was, what a you know, and there is a reason she is my favorite beyond just the structure of us being the eldest children of twin sisters. Yeah. No, there's, that's really cool though. I like that. Yeah. So that was part of my week having that moment where in terms of my family, there's no one who I, you know, would rather spend time with yet she's so far away yeah yeah (laughs) well i hope you get to make more space with her for the kinds of conversations i think that's that's an awesome thing what's up ernesto (laughs) he's like i want tummy rubs Donde está gato? Yes. <laughs> Donde yes. está gato? <laughs> where's, the, where's, the, where's the cat? <laughs> where's the cat? <laughs> but he gets along with the cats. He's an honorary cat. He's the smallest one of all. Oh. So oh yeah. Yeah. He knows his place of, on. He knows he his place on the food chain. He does. They they get along very well, Ernie and the cats. Uh, 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 Ernie and the cats. <laughs> Ernie, Ernie, <laughs> We've read Ernie the and the song. cats. That's right. Huh? <laughs> He's looking at me like, Mom, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, yeah, I, I feel like that brings us in a, a good spot, Stefan. A good spot. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I um. I have to start, I think one of the things that I want to do is start thinking beyond where I've even been thinking. Yeah. I have to and even think more expansively. That is, you know, I feel like that's something you brought up a, a, a few weeks ago and it, it's kind of been churning in my brain, but it's also a thing that I, it's still, we talk a lot about like thinking versus knowing. And it's something that I still think without knowing yet. Like I don't, it's not so comfortable that it's just a part of being, right? Is that automatic thinking bigger or um, knowing bigger. And it's something that I, I keep kind of pondering and trying to process and and understand, I guess. And, and maybe I don't need to understand it. And that's it's that's the thing. It's, it's more that I'm trying to, practice what that means um Mm -hmm. to think bigger it's like here's the here's this and then bigger is is just out there for the the taking and for the the experiencing and even this experience that i had over the last weekend and the dialogue that i had with um her name was wani um 
the dialogue that I had with Wani about Pilgrim and, and, and just expanse and experience and embracing, like, I feel like she is further along maybe, or it has a, has been in that space longer in, 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 boy, I feel like I'm putting all these parameters around it in describing it. Well, but... all I would ask, um, do, do you want to spend more time with that person? Yeah, I do. And there are, yeah. without, without and needing like to judge, something. without yeah. needing to judge or know where she is at relative to you. Right. Is there, is there an attraction? Is there seemingly, does it feel like there's more there or is it just inspiration to meet more people like that in different dimensions? But the somewhere there is a knowing that like this is good, this moment is good, yeah. and maybe that's all we need to know. And right. That's... Like this moment is good. This right. is a great moment. And I want to celebrate and acknowledge it. Do I need to figure it out? Do I need to force another moment um like this? Do I need to uh find more people like this? No, I just need to acknowledge that this is a beautiful moment. This is a something I can aspire to or I can be open to. Do I need to wrangle it in some way? Not necessarily, <laughs> but but I know that's the thing that's the that's the thing about knowing it doesn't need to be like a lightning bolt. Right. Like, it's just, a, it's like, like, I know this is good, even though I have no idea where it will go or take us. Right. And I think that that's where I'm at in a lot of ways. Like with, you know, I met eight new women over the weekend and I know that there are already opportunities to be around them more. Um, you know, some more than others for whatever reason, but like, and so I, I will like remain open to those experiences without forcing them. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. It, it, it is interesting. Like, I feel like there's kind of going back to what you were saying. It's like, I want more of this. I want more of, of that feeling. And then also to kind of embrace the idea of you know, I've, I've opened my arms to more and now I want to ask again for more. And I want to keep trying that and seeing what happens if, what happens when I do this? Because so far, since the first conversation that you and I have had, um, uh, titled Unconstrained, since our first Unconstrained conversation, every week has been a practice of expanding in some way or other or letting go or, or, or whatever, but like, and every week, new, exciting, amazing things unfold somehow, you know, and I, I yes. don't put a parameter on it. All I'm doing is saying, <laughs> yes. And as they say, right. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it's really, yeah. it's, it's, saying yes don't I pull like that this. tony robbins stuff on me right yeah and i don't i don't want to but at the same time it's like it, no. it's um and that's an improv thing right the yes and yes so like a exactly old improv exactly. practice but it's it, it very much applies though it, it is um i it's, it's funny because when i hear somebody say yes and my internal response is often how about just yes for now, for me, that's where I'm at. I'm at, how about just yes, yeah. just yes. I don't need the and all the time, but but maybe I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> whether you need it or not, doesn't matter. It's whether you want it, because if you <laughs> want something, chances are it already exists. Right, right. Right, because everything, everything is already, there is infinite prop possibilities to what we can manifest here. And so if you want something, somebody has already thought of it. 
right. or or maybe you thought of it at another point in time or in history or in the the non-linear non-localized conscious universe <laughs> yeah. yeah oh man but yeah that i mean i feel like that that idea is fueled by our conversations every week and kind of just like that checkpoint of like here's how it unfolded this week right is like that's what i walk into the week thinking is like okay uh, like how do i open even more than i opened last time how do i embrace more or just attract more because i, I feel like it, it is working it is it is unfolding in these really magical ways. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, not only do I want to keep that ride going, but I want to see like how much is possible, like how much is really possible? Like how, how open can we get? <laughs> well, yeah. Imagine if we could do this in front of uh, a live audience and have people chiming in and sharing their experiences yeah. or imagine or even a small step of imagining bringing other people into this yeah where where we even even your friend talking about uh pilgrims yeah it would be interesting to hear her point of view on how she got to where she was to this place of recognition yeah of their there being this kind of state where you, uh, whether you call it a seeker or uh, I don't know that there's a, uh, I mean, there's plenty of names in Eastern religion for these types of things The you know, the pilgrim, well, there's the pilgrim, the seeker, the sannyasin, the devotee, all of these things, but we're just searching for the truth of who we are and what's available to us. And so how does, how do other people get there yeah. and how do they raise that level? Because there is a very, 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 uh, it's, it, it is exponential after a point. Yeah. And and I want to be there for it. I want to be ready for it. I want to be there for it. I want to be open to it. And uh, I, I laugh. I'm <laughs> laughing because I, I think, well, I, well, sure. And then I think, oh man, you mean I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to give up just watching YouTube now. <laughs> I'm going to have to live it. <laughs> No, I'm going to have to give up watching my, <laughs> That's so interesting, though. right. Give up things where I spend energy on just consuming versus actually creating. You know, I, I think even in that light though, there's always a, I, I, I think about that a lot, especially with kids and I, you know, and trying to teach them to create more than they consume. But at the same time, there is a, there's a level of consumption that I think is is healthy for taking information in and and under and just learning, you know, learning, opening your mind to more. And oh, absolutely. Information needs to come in. Yeah. And how we get it, I mean, if it's YouTube, it's YouTube. <laughs> Sometimes YouTube it gives us a, a greater reach than we would have, I mean, you know, two decades oh. ago we didn't even have, right? And the reach, yes. I feel like, is, is so, so maybe you do and maybe you don't have to stop. Uh, <laughs> I have been up, I have downloaded all of the recent episodes. I'm getting ready to upload three, three of them. And I noticed that somebody has been watching. Oh, hey, that's amazing. So, so somebody has been watching, maybe. Hello, mystery person. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, but I think there'll be a point where we we will, I, I certainly will put some more energy into making it a place where, you know, there's more, where people 
will get an idea of yeah. that they can access it and that hopefully it feels like just being at a uh, a casual conversation amongst friends that you can have you can listen to in the background and that it will catalyze something that it will yeah. catalyze something in others like it is catalyzing in I us. I would love that. I mean, I think that is a a great piece of what this the hope because, for this is, you know, because not just this, for ourselves, but because we put on a lot of things like music and things like that in the background and we consume them and it is in an unconscious manner, right? We're not picking yeah. and choosing. We're just putting it on. And hopefully what we are doing here is something that someone can put on in a completely unconscious manner. And the bulk of it will be beneficial to their personal development their goals that they have for themselves, their quest, their, their quest as a pilgrim. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. I do hope so. I think that would be a beautiful um, unfolding of, of what we're doing. All right. Well, on that note, I think we have come to a, a beautiful conclusion. Yes. Indeed. And I want to I want to thank you for this journey this morning. Thank you as well. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and I will look forward to celebrating another moment like this with you on Tuesday. We'll see you Tuesday. And and Ernesto. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. See you later, Stefan. Take care. All right, bye, Jamie. Bye.